Hi, I'm Teresa from Phoenix Gate Crafts and welcome to my first podcast. I realized when I was preparing for my video on five unpopular opinions that I have, I realized that one of the things I don't like, which is yarny podcasts, I figured if I'm not finding what I like, maybe I should make something and hopefully it becomes something that I would like to watch. Because I figure if I would like to watch it, maybe other people would like to watch it. So here's my first attempt at that. Let me know how I do at the bottom and if you'd like to see more. Or if you don't want to see more, let me know either way. All feedback is good feedback. Let's just keep it constructive. If there's something you think I should do better, please let me know how. I'd appreciate it. So, podcast number one. I've never done this before. And... This is definitely a never say never thing because when I first started doing the yarn information stuff, I was like, I'm never going to do a podcast because they suck and look at me now. Let's start with the format of all knitting and yarn related podcasts. What I'm wearing. This is a flax light from Tin Can Knits. And this has an interesting story because, okay, it's not a very interesting story, but I like it because I didn't have enough yarn for a sweater in something that I would make. So like I had a sweater quantity of um, Wool of the Andes in various colors that may or may not have looked good together, but I had enough, but I don't wanna do that. I did a sweater once, a Mountain Mist in Wool of the Andes and it's very itchy, especially around the neck and chest, you know, where the skin is more delicate. So I was like, no, I can't do that. So I wound up actually just kind of raiding my stash, really pulled out a bunch of stuff. And this is part of what made me decide I needed to reorganize my stash. And I have that video, a link in the description. But, um, I wound up kind of BSing my way into enough yarn for the sweater. Now, a quick tip about Tin Can Knits, their yardage is overestimated. It is intentionally overestimated by quite a bit so that a person can get enough yarn for their project for sure. My finished object later is also a tin can knit sweater and I still had a lot of yarn left over. So just be aware you don't have to have that much yardage because here's the funny thing. All of the yarn I managed to find for this sweater is stroll fingering weight yarn. I did not dye any of it because I do like to dye my stroll is my favorite. But I initially found I had two balls of this gradient from here to here. And it was, I think it was called sunset or something. I don't remember. I'll look it up and put it here. I had two balls of it and so I alternated skeins uh, so that way it could kind of gradiate a little bit. But the orange wound up just kind of transitioning at pretty much the same time. So I didn't do that too much. The orange was uh, a little bit more. And um, the transitions look a little more subtle in person. They just really don't look subtle here. And that was from the yellow to the purple. And then I was like, well, that's not going to be enough uh, for the body even, let alone. And I, I like my sweaters long. I want them to cover my butt so I could wear leggings and do a very 1990s thing with them. Um, so I was like, I have a ton of stroll black. So I got all that, but I got nervous because I did my math and the yardage didn't add up to what was in the pattern. So I bought four more balls because the balls of black are 50 grams versus the uh, gradient were 100 gram cakes. Okay, so I go ahead and I knit the sweater. I decided not to do the um, garter stitch patch on the sleeves. Just, I've made three others of these and I did it and it's fine. And then I realized, wait, I'm making this in black. How am I going to keep track if I can't see my stitches? Turned out not to be a problem. I could see my stitches in a well-lit room, 
So I wound up being very careful about counting and it turned out really nice. The sleeves are a good length, I think. Woo, I can bend, I can stretch, I can raise my arms. And though I don't really see very much holes in the armpits. That's my personal vendetta, holes in the armpits. So it turned out very good. By the way, the secret to no holes in the armpits, pick up three little like stitches, twist all of them, and then knit all three together in that gap. It does make a bit of a corner down there, but I'd rather have a corner than gaping holes. You know, it, it's good to have a blowout down there to let all the stink out and the BO, but you know, realistically we don't need that. That's not how that works. So I did it. And at the end, I had five, almost five skeins left of black. You know how I bought four skeins to make sure that I had enough yarn to finish the sweater? I had not only the four skeins left over at the end, I had like one and a half left. And I wound up making my husband a pair of socks with those leftover bits. I still have four and a half skeins of yarn. So the next thing to discuss is shop updates, except I have no shop updates. I haven't been making anything new. Nothing's new in my shop. Um, so I can showcase something. So my Grandma June's doily. It is a crochet doily that I made from a picture of a doily that my Grandma June had made uh, well before I was born. That doily she made was like 80 years old, according to my mom. I got into crochet and I was like, you know what? I could crochet this doily. That would be so cool. And I went to my mom and was like, hey, where's the doily? And she's like, oh, I gave it to your sister in Montana. Okay, so I message my sister and have her take some pictures, one real close, one of the whole thing. And I basically pieced together from this picture, this doily my grandma had made. Now, I don't have a clue who originally made the pattern for the original doily. And, you know, mine might be a little different because I probably interpreted things a little bit differently. Um, but I made a pattern based on it. I only charge about $2 for the pattern um, because I figure, hey, I made this pattern. I made a whole bunch of them for my siblings and my aunt and my uncles. And so now it's like, you know what? I'd like to share it. And um, I've never posted anything on Ravelry, so you need to charge something for Etsy, so I decided two bucks. It looks really nice in some kind of a rainbow thread, but you can do it however you like. I've done it in white, black, rainbows, pastels, um, blue, anything. It looks nice. I like it. It has a little bit of sentiment to me, so uh, the link is in the description if you are interested. Uh, next thing should be acquisitions, except this is my first podcast. Where do I start with acquisitions? I have a yarn stash. Uh, if you are interested in seeing what my whole stash looks like now, I did do a organizing my stash video that I will um, do one of those click through boxes at the end of the video. You can uh, click directly to that if you're interested. But I haven't actually bought yarn uh, since last year. It is currently uh, January 11th right now, 2024. So yeah, I haven't purchased any yarn since about Thanksgiving-ish. So yeah, nothing here. Yeah, sorry, I'm not a very good yarny consumer. I've been trying to shop my stash um, a lot, like I did for this project. I did purchase the yarn for my finished object. So I kind of reintroduced myself to crochet in late 2017, and I taught myself to knit in 2018, and I realized I had a bit of a yarn problem. 
Uh, when I was having a good day, I would get off at one of the two exits that leads to a yarn shop. The first exit leads to my local yarn shop, which is expensive yarn. So uh, if I went there, I'd buy a skein or two. Or if I stopped at the second exit, I would either go to Joan Fabrics or Hobby Lobby. And I would get a tote bag and I would fill it with yarn and spend like 50 or so dollars on yarn that had no project for it. And I realized this was a problem because I realized this was emotional spending. Now it was good mood emotional spending, not trying to fix a bad mood, but it wasn't healthy for where my husband's and my budget was at the time. Um, it created some credit card debt, not a super ridiculous amount. We kind of caught it early, but this is why in 2019, I didn't do a true no buy year, but what I did was I created some rules for myself for buying yarn. And one of two criteria need to be met in order for me to buy yarn. One is that I'm buying yarn for a project. So I bought the yarn for my finished object and then I made my finished object. And I'll show you that at the end. But the second criteria is that it's on sale. If it's both, it's even better. And regardless of one or the other, or both, um, I need to clear the purchase with my husband. And this isn't a, I have to ask him permission or anything. This is just one of those things of, I know my judgment is compromised in this situation and he can help me make a better decision for our financial situation. He said, you know, there have been a few times where he's told me, you know, we really can't afford this right now, maybe next month. And then if I still wanted it in a month, I could get it in a month. But more often than not, it was an impulse thing and I didn't need it and I didn't wind up getting it the next month. Versus like this, they have it on sale. I've picked out the yarn I want. It's going to be $40 for 10 balls of yarn. And he said, okay, that's not bad because the yarn for his sweater costs 45. Even with shipping, it saved. So I wound up getting it and I did make the project. So that's what I've been doing. And as a result, this section is probably going to be pretty slim just because I don't feel like buying stuff if I don't need it. My finances aren't such that I can just do that. So, whips. I do have a whip. And for once, it's actually a knitting whip. Uh, since I picked up cross stitch, there's just as likely a chance it's gonna be cross stitch or something else. I am making a shawl. Do I need a shawl? No, but it is a shawl. It's just gonna be a really long shawl because I want it to be something I can really bundle in but this is lace weight yarn. I'm not sure if it's technically lace weight or cobweb, but it is very thin. I have two balls of it. It has a ton of yardage. My plan is it's going to have red in it. So this is, um, it's, it kind of looks black. It kind of looks like it could be a dark gray. It kind of looks like whether it's black or dark gray could be a matter of opinion. Um, it is showing up fairly accurate on the screen though, so that's good. But like, if you compare it to this black, which is definitely black in my sweater, it's a little grayish. I don't know. But um, this yarn is something or something from Expression Fiber Art. I bought it in 2018. It does not have tags. Tag! All right, the other one had a tag. Alpaca silk lace, 50% baby alpaca, 50% mulberry silk, uh, 552 meters or 604 yards, and I believe this is 100 grams, though it doesn't actually say. So hand wash only, lay flat to dry. And uh, the uh, thing I'm making, the shawl, is boring. It is all knit stitches at this time. I might do some stockinette sections, I'm not sure, but what I'm definitely gonna do is add some red because I have this much left over. Do I know how much this is? No. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure whatever the heck this is, which is probably wool, um, I'm pretty sure it's hand wash only. And I got this at my local yarn shop. I have another one of these that's in blue. I think I have two. But that would be something completely different and probably something with a little bit more pizzazz to it. But I figure with the dark black and then doing random sized uh, stripes of this will probably create kind of a cool appearance to it. Just, you know, having thick, thin, thick, thin based on the roll of a dice. I think that's going to be fun. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll show you more of that once it's completed. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the Mountain Mist by Tin Can Knits. Now, whereas the Flax and the Flax Light are free patterns from them, uh, the Mountain Mist is part of a book. You can purchase it individually, I think, at Ravelry, but I think it's a worthwhile pattern. I have not blocked it, and I am not super good at color work because I don't do it very often, but I think it turned out pretty okay. Now, the yarn is Brava Worsted from Knit Picks. I don't remember the names of the colors, um, but there are four of them, which you can tell if you look really close in the proper light. There is a lighter blue before the main body darker blue. You have to be in the right light to see it because shopping colors online is hard, and this is proof of it. Now, what I could have done was switched this bright blue with this nearly gray blue, uh, but that would have wound up with these weird gray diamonds and I didn't like that. So I did it this way. And the cool thing is, if you're not in the perfect light, it kind of looks like lights shining on the top because it does look a little bit more blue up here near the mountain peaks. So I think it creates a kind of interesting color effect, even if that's not what I was originally going for. I thought there'd be more uh, tonal variants. But you know, you buy online, you take the risk. And this fits very nicely. But I had to do something a little different because I didn't make gauge. So my gauge, I wound up with stitches that are too big. And I really liked the fabric it made, so I didn't want to go down. So I did math. And what you do is you take the gauge you get and divide by the gauge you're supposed to have. And you get this decimal. And then what you do is you multiply that decimal by every stitch count in the piece. And I have that on a different video on how to deal with gauge and how to make that transition where you don't have to actually switch your needles. But here's a different trick that might work. Go and find a spot in the pattern where you have like a stitch count, like the total number of stitches you're supposed to have at the end of the full yoke. That's a great spot to be in. And what you do is you figure out the size you want based on your bust measurement, and you go and find that number of stitches you're supposed to have. And you multiply that number of stitches for the size you want by that decimal you got when you did your division. And that will tell you the actual number of stitches you need right there. Then you go, that number you get to use a calculator, it's just easier. You don't have to remember numbers and do it all in your head. Um, that number that's on your calculator, see if there's another number in the pattern that is that many stitches. So I was originally going to be doing um, an, a 2X, I believe. And by doing my own gauge and finding a gauge I liked, I wound up doing a large size. Now, if you do that, you still need to do the measurements for your original size because the measurements are for, you know, your arm length and the body length. So you want to do those measurements, but you, you do them with the stitch counts of your original piece. And it got a little interesting on the arms 
because which part of the pattern should I listen to? Should I do, oh, hi. There's a puppy right here and she just, she's being a little attention slut. Hi, puppy. Um, <clears throat> she totally pushed me over. Oh, muscly dude. Anyway, I could do the number of rows and repeats that I need for the smaller size that I was actually using stitch counts for, or I could use the larger ones for the actual size I was knitting. But here's the thing, my stitches were too big. So not only my stitch gauge was too big, but my row gauge was too big. So what I wound up doing was I wound up doing the smaller size numbers and repeats, but I made sure to go to the length. So I did the four inches of knitting even, and then I did the nine rounds of repeat, or the nine repeats of the six rounds, whatever, of the decrease rounds. And then that left me with this much left. And I wound up just knitting flat until I reached the length I needed for the larger size. And then regardless of size, it was two inches for the cuff, which another thing I did was I fucked up the, uh, the arm and you know, the cuffs and the, um, the hems. There we go, words. So it's supposed to be two by two rib stitch and I did one by one. Uh, but you know what, I owned it and I just did it for the whole thing. So it's a, it's a just artistic choice. And you know what, it looks fine. Which I did that because uh, the regular tin can knits does require one by one. So have it, I wasn't reading. So anyway, I, I hope you found this interesting. I haven't been doing very much knitting since I picked up cross stitch again. So I kind of have been going back to knitting after this year where I've been doing mostly cross stitch. So let me know what you think. Uh, just a heads up for future podcasts. If I do it, I'm going to be doing any fiber art that I do will make an appearance. So you're probably going to see knitting, probably not so much crochet because I don't do that very much anymore. Um, but there might be some Tunisian crochet and there's probably going to be some cross stitch. So, yep. Uh, let me know what you think. I look forward to hearing your opinions and happy crafting.